Hey, it's Mark Edward Lewis, and welcome back to Cinema Sound, uh, Cinema Sound Studio B, even. You know, I really am not a horror movie fan at all. I don't like to be scared. Suspense is as far as I'll go. So when we start talking about things like phantom power and phantom mono, I get a little nervous, I gotta say. In this case, we're gonna be talking about the differences between straight stereo mono, which I know is an oxymoron like jumbo shrimp, stereo mono, you'll see, and center mono. Stereo mono is really a, a version of phantom mono. You're creating the perception of mono by sending the same thing out of both left and right speakers, or for you, left and right, left and right, whichever way this camera is floating. And then it puts the same thing to you, and it seems like it's mono, even though it's the same thing coming out of two different channels. Whereas in 5.1 or one of the surround channels where you have a center channel, that's coming directly to you from a single channel, not coming from left and right. And in almost all digital audio workstations, you can select whether you want the dialogue to come from phantom mono or stereo mono or center mono. We're gonna talk about the differences between them and hopefully if you've got headphones, you'll be able to listen in sort of a binaural surround to the difference and make great choices for yourself. Let's roll. All right, we're here in Adobe Audition, and this is a, a pretty simple session. We've got a couple of dialogue tracks that are identical, and then a music track. But what's a little unconventional is that we're going to be listening to this in binaural surround using Spatial Audio Designer. And let me show you. I've put in the Send plugin, and I on every channel that I want to send to surround. So this one, you can see that the mono dialogue is actually going to left and right. Uh, left and right front. Here is the version of the dialogue that's going to the center channel. And then the music I have sort of back a little bit. And let me show you here what that's like. I'm just gonna grab the stereo bits and listen here. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record and you can see the way. And you wanna make sure you're on headphones. If you're listening to this on speakers at all, it's just never gonna work. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record and you can see the waveform happening. And so that's the stereo version. Here's the center channel version. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record and you can see the waveform happening. And that's super nice. Um, much more present and much less room. And the reason for that, uh, there's a room simulation going on there, uh, actually in this uh, plugin, is that you only have one speaker doing the work. And in the stereo version, you have two speakers doing the work, which actually makes it twice as loud to yourself and in the room. Although the simulation kind of does a nice equal balancing of them. In real life, you'd have a lot more sound coming from the stereo uh, phantom mono than you would from the center channel. Let me show you how cool this plugin is just for fun because it is fun. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record and you can see the waveform happening and that's super nice. Um, you'll also notice, just you probably already noticed that as I'm speaking, biologically, me personally, Mark Edward Lewis, has a lot of breath noise. Surround. Every time you take a breath, my mechanism makes a lot of noise and we're gonna be showing you how to get rid of that super awesomely, probably in a way that only Audition can do. Center. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record and you can see the waveform happening and that's super nice. Halfway. Um, you'll also notice, just you probably already noticed, that as I'm speaking, biologically, me personally, Mark Edward Lewis, has a lot of breath noise every time I take a And all kinds of fun things in between. You can really hear that Zulu version, vision of this uh, binaural work. So we're getting a pretty good uh, feel even though we're in headphones and, and streaming. All right, so let's take a look at what these differences are and when we might use the phantom mono versus the center channel. Generally with dialogue, because it is your primary storytelling uh, discipline, you want that dialogue coming from the center channel and mainly from a theatrical perspective, really not so much for home theater and certainly not for the internet because we're not really doing surround that way, but because it's in stereo. But just imagine you're in a theater in fact, let me bring this up and make a little visual aid here. You're, imagine this is a theater. We're looking actually down on top of this guy. This is from the back, so let's look down on top. And you're sitting maybe over here towards the left. And if you're over here, you're getting a lot of that left speaker, almost nothing from this right, and some from the center. But if you're doing your dialogue in left and right only in that phantom mono, it's actually twice as loud for you in the mixing position. So you'll have brought it down slightly to compensate about three decibels. 
But if you're sitting over here in the audience, you're not getting that extra power from the right channel. You're only getting it from the left, which means that your dialogue in this channel is slightly low, three decibels low if you're over here. And that's why we like having dialogue in the center channel, because it's the best chance that an audience sitting anywhere in this theater has of getting the right mix, because it's only coming out of one speaker. Also, the more towards the middle that you sit, the more phase issues you're going to actually encounter in comb filter and all kinds of weird stuff if you do phantom mono. So dialogue, unless you really know what you're doing, you want to have in the center channel. The reason we want to use phantom mono, because it's so awesome if you, if you know what you're doing, is for effects and things that are truly stereo, where if I were sitting over here on the left, I'd still be able to perceive something that was happening on the right. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to close this. Let's say we wanted to really add a cool effect to the voice, like maybe some sci-fi thing where he's talking normally and all of a sudden you want to punch him into something really, really large. Well, here's that mono again. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record and you can see. And here's the phantom mono. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record. And in order to do that, you'll notice here in the effects rack that the uh, the spatial audio designer send is at the top of the rack. We need to actually put any plug-in that we want to use above it. Otherwise, it'll just send the direct signal and we're no good. So let's add a flanger, because that's fun. And uh, I'll just set up a little loop here. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record and you can see the waveform happening. And that's super nice. Um, you'll also notice, just probably already noticed, that as I'm speaking, biologically, me personally, Mark Edward Lewis, has a lot of breath noise. Every time I take a breath, my mechanism makes a lot of noise. And we're going to be showing you how to get rid of that super Awesome. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record. You can see the waveform happening. And that's pretty cool. That's pretty wild, yeah? A really, really fast flanger. But notice that it is truly stereo. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record. You can see the waveform happening. As opposed to what it sounds like clean in the center channel. And as soon as I do, I... Oops. Here we go. And as soon as I do... Oops. Oh, that's because I have this on. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record, and you can see the wave. And if we wanted to oscillate between them, punch between them for a really cool effect to punch out, check out what that phantom mono turned into stereo does to the sound. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record, and you can see the happening, and that's super nice. Um, you'll also notice, just you probably already know, I'm speaking biologically... Mark Edward Lewis has a lot of breath noise. Every time I take a breath... And it doesn't even have to be that draconian if we bring this modulation rate down. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record, and you can see the waveform happening, and that's super nice. Um, you'll also notice, just, you probably already noticed, that as I'm speaking... So even with a subtle setting, there's a really good reason to go into phantom mono. But again, is it truly phantom mono if we use a subtle setting? No, it's really more stereo. Um, let me show you what phantom mono can do, even in in mono. So if you want to punch up the volume of your phantom mono or your center channel into something that's really, really surrounding, then you can do this kind of a thing. Here is the mono, sort of the center channel again. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record See the waveform happening, and that's super nice. Um, you'll also notice, just probably already noticed, that as I'm speaking, biologically, Personally, Mark Edward Lewis has a lot of breath noise every time I take a breath. And all of a sudden now, when you go to that Phantom Mono, it's much louder, feels more enveloping, and we make up for any kind of issues that we may have because we're sitting over to one side or the other in the theater. Another thing you can do is actually send the dialogue for a moment to the surrounds and really fill this theater. And I don't suggest you do this very often because, first of all, quality control will call you and go, what the heck are you doing? But check this out. And as soon as I I do, I'm starting to record, and you can see the waveform happening, and that's super nice. Um, you'll also notice, just, you probably already noticed, that as I'm speaking... And center. Logically, me personally, Mark Edward Lewis, has a lot of breath noise. And Every time breath, my mechanism makes a lot of noise, and we're going to be showing you how to get rid of that super... Awesome. And, as and if you have a voice that actually has a lot of low frequencies, or if you want to add those low frequencies, in fact, let's try that. We'll do a little... Uh, Pitch shifter. Here we go. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record. And you can see. 
and as soon as I do, I'm starting to record. You can see the waveform happening. Now, there are definitely low frequencies down there, which we can happily turn up in the LFE. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record, and you can see the waveform happening, and that's super nice. Although, if you're not on good headphones, you probably can't tell. Let's check it out between the center now and this. And as soon as I do, I'm starting to record, and you can see... That's super nice. Um, you'll also notice, just you probably already noticed, that as I'm speaking, biologically... And if you've noticed, because the pitch shifter is working on multiple channels, it's subtly changing the sound, so it's not just straight mono everywhere. It's actually kind of doing a cool little oscillation that's actually very real. Again, is it true mono if we're doing subtle oscillations? No, it's not. And typically, I'm just going to say, for the most part, you're going to want to keep your dialogue in that center channel for the reasons that I described earlier, because of phase issues in a theater and because people are not going to get the same kind of dialogue mix. They're going to start missing the dialogue if you put them in phantom mono. Now, for effects, if you have a stereo effect or a surround effect, well, psh, that's a great place to put phantom mono and then bring it out and do all these kinds of things. But anything that's truly going to be phantom mono is going to be a problem for anybody that's sitting on the sides of the theater or not quite in the dead middle. On the whole, in any surround format, you want that dialogue coming from the center channel. It avoids all the phase issues or anything that might happen in a larger theater presentation from having you know the same thing coming out of both left and right. It's also, the, every surround actual speaker amplification system is designed to pump a lot of volume through that center channel and get the dialogue, which is the storytelling aspect of sound, making sure everybody hears it all across the theater. I mean, unless you're in the far you know, left front you know, <laughs> row of the theater, and you're not going to get a lot of center channel. But there are aspects, as you can see, where we do want to have that phantom mono, that stereo mono, where it can be really, really interesting and create great effects, especially if we're delivering on the internet or on headphones instead of in a large theatrical environment. It can be really useful. If you've got questions about surround or center channel or phantom mono or just being scared at night, that's okay. Come to tell us about it on the cinemasound.com forum, and we'll make sure that there aren't any monsters under your bed. Until then, we'll see you in post. Even if you're